during your run. Uh, Joe began his career of, uh, at uh, local sports days in Renews and Calvert on the southern shore. Uh, he was a member of the Mon Cross Country Team for three years and an MVP for two of those years and a winner of the Jubilee Cup. He's been, in, uh, he's been a winner of the Tele 10 race and has run 39 Tele 10s uh, his, with a best time of 51.33. Uh, he's run under the 60 mark 21 times over in, within a 25 year period. So perhaps he'd know something about anxiety and fatigue. Um, <laughs> Well, I'm going to run out of time after you read all these plots, but I'll, do, I'll try to do some of them. Uh, provincial Marathon Champion, 1975, best time of 2.33.49. Uh, he's run 52 marathons to date, including uh, most of the big ones, uh, Boston nine times, New York, uh, Vancouver, Ottawa, Honolulu, Dublin, Dublin, Athens, and Prague. Uh, heavily involved with the NLAA over the years, serving as the road race chairman. Uh, Heavily involved in the organization of the Tele 10 for many years. Uh, he, he's, he's been doing some writing lately. He wrote a history of the Tele 10. He's currently uh, uh, writing a history of the provincial marathon. Uh, I think he's got it in draft form already. Uh, I was looking. Uh, he's been presenting a little bit about that, um, and he's he's been doing a bit of coaching and uh, of uh, runners and holding some clinics. So uh, I guess this is a bit of an extension of that. We're going to ask him to come and speak about. Uh, Anxiety and fatigue. So, welcome, Joe Ryan. Right. <laughs> okay, first of all, I'd like, of course, to thank Steve for those few words. I'd like to thank Juanita from the CGC Organizing Committee for extending this invitation to speak to you this afternoon as we prepare ourselves for this fifth annual Cape to Cabot run, this uh, gentle 20 kilometer trek over the rolling green hills of Cape Spear, <laughs> or as some have said to me, the fog shrouded hills, you know. It's going to be nice tomorrow, by the way. I'm delighted to be here today, and it's wonderful to see so many of you stopping by, so thank you for attending. When I was first invited to speak to you this afternoon, I got to wondering what I might possibly talk about, because as many of you know, there's quite a lot of talks one can cover. I thought maybe I could do a motivational speech, but I understand there's an Olympic uh, medalist who's going to do that later. <laughs> thought about mental preparation for runners, maybe affirmation. I thought about a lot of things, and then I said, ah, nutrition. And they said, no, you, you don't want to do that unless you want to talk about Guinness and pizza. <laughs> so then I said, ah, I've got it. We'll talk about surviving Cape to Cat. And that sounds a little bit morbid, so let's gentle this up a little bit. What I want to talk to you today about is how we go about preparing ourselves mentally and psychologically for a race like Cape to Cabot, which we all understand is a very tough <coughs> race. And then I want to kind of move into how we can handle the fatigue that is sure to build up as we challenge those hills tomorrow morning. So my topics today, as Steve indicated a few minutes ago, how we might reduce that anxiety, that nervousness that naturally occurs for a lot of people before the race, and then once we get into the race, how do we handle that accumulating fatigue? Let me say, first of all, that many of us prepare just fine physically for races of this type. We, we train hard, we do our long runs, we do our tempo sessions, our interval sessions, what have you. We have our good shoes, we have our fuel belts, we have the latest running apparel, some of, some of us even have compression socks, we have arm warmers, all kinds of things. But do we prepare ourselves in the same way mentally for such a race? Do we allow ourselves to remain relatively calm the night before the race, the morning of the race? Or do we get all anxious and nervous and get ourselves all worked up? You know, some of us do. 
Now let me ask, are there any first timers here? Anybody running this race for the first time? Oh, lovely. Oh. You guys are in for a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's only natural for many of us to have those kind, this kind of nervousness, to have those butterflies, to have these upset stomachs. Uh, these feelings of, oh God, I feel sick this morning. And I'm sure you, you have all experienced that. So let's maybe start by looking at what this anxiety, what this nervousness is all about. It's basically an anticipatory emotion. And what I mean by that, it is something you stress about, something that might happen that you're already worried about. It hasn't happened yet, but you are worried <coughs> that it's going to happen. It, maybe this emotion is, is triggered by the difference between what you expect or hope for and what actually happens. Let me give you an example. You're in your run tomorrow morning, you're five kilometers in, and suddenly you feel very, very tired. This is not something you expected. And now you're really tired and you've still got another 15 kilometers to go. What do you do? You start worrying about it, you start getting all stressed about it, or do you try to cope with that? That's what we're going to talk about. Anxiety then is really a future-oriented response to a perceived threat that makes you feel powerless <coughs> because you're wondering how you're going to deal with it when it actually happens. And before I go any further, I'd like to say to you that there is a difference between good or positive anxiety and bad or negative anxiety. It's good to be a little bit anxious, a little bit, you know, keyed up. You need that, I think. But bad or negative anxiety is generated by extreme fear or extreme nervousness about your performance. You, you, you just worry stiff about how you're going to do. You're feeling out of control. You can't get it together. There's that stifling fear of, what if, what if, what if this happens? <coughs> and that's going to interfere with your preparation for the race. Now, good anxiety, on the other hand, comes from feeling enthusiastic about what you are about to do. There's a feeling you're ready for anything. Okay? Have it ever, as we say up the shore. It's being psyched up and ready for the race, but it's still remaining relaxed. You're ready for the challenge, and this is going to result in good preparation for your race and a better effort when you actually get out there on the course. All right, how do we know if we're getting too nervous or too anxious about the race? What are the signs? What do we do? Well, there are certain signs we can look for. There are mental or psychological signs, and there are physical signs. Let's deal with the mental or psychological ones first. If you're really anxious, you're starting to lack focus. You know, you're all over the place. You're all in a tizzy, as we say. You're forgetting crucial details. You're getting confused. You can't think straight. You're unable to make a firm decision. What shirt should I wear? You know, is it going to be cold? Is it going to be hot? Should I wear gloves? Should I wear a hat? Should I wear long pants? All of these things start to go through your mind very rapidly, cause further nervousness. You get irritable about things. Come on, come on, let's get there. Okay, those are the psychological signs. You have that uncontrollable worry. Now, on the other hand, there are the physical signs, and these are very easy to, to notice. You start to sweat. You start to hyperventilate. Your muscles are tensing up. Okay? Your blood pressure goes up. Your heart rate goes up. There's that sense of fatigue all of a sudden. Feeling really tired. Stomach gets upset. You want to go to the bathroom? Maybe more than once. You got that restlessness. The night before you can't sleep, you can't do anything. You're thinking about tomorrow. So those are the physical signs. So the signs are there. Now what do we do to reduce those or get rid of some of that, at least some of that nervousness or anxiety? But I think, first of all, we need to be alert to the early signs. When, when the nervousness first starts to set in, that's when we need to deal with it. Because if we let it build up too much, it becomes much harder. I would suggest that if we find ourselves getting nervous, particularly the night before the morning off, we try some relaxation ritual. It might be something you do, someplace you go, you know, maybe watch a movie, listen to music, these kinds of things. Some people like to uh, 
practice what we call progressive muscle relaxation. You, you tense up certain muscles and release, tense the arms, the shoulders, the hips, and so on. That works very effective in calming oneself. Uh, other people may tape record a relaxation session. Possible, you can do that. Have a pre-race ritual to follow. Don't, don't just start worrying and thinking incessantly about the coming race. I would suggest you make some positive self-statements to yourselves. You say to yourself, look, I am ready for this. I am strong. I am well-trained. I can do this. I'm not going to worry. What, what, what about this? What, what if it happens? Leave it, OK? Take lots of deep breaths, lot, lots of slow deep breaths. Shift your concentration to the present moment. Don't be worrying about tomorrow morning or what's going to happen during the race. Just be present to whatever is happening now. Again, accept a little bit of nervousness. That's good. You want to be a little bit enthusiastic. Mentally rehearse your event. Some people like to visualize. You ever see that video? Uh, CBC had it on last year. Mike Camarelli playing for the Canadians, sitting in the stands, and he's, he's so visualizing. Long. He's got the hockey stick, and he's at the side of the goal, and he's... And when he's in a game situation, the puck comes to the side of the goal, he doesn't have to think. It's just an automatic thing. So visualize. Okay, see yourselves running smoothly, all of that sort of thing. Look confident and ready. Remember some of your great training runs. You are well trained. You can do this. That's what you've got to keep telling yourself. Replace feelings of fear with those of strength. Yes, we can do this. Uh, the morning off the race, don't just stand around and be nervous. Uh, you know, move around a little, jog around a little bit, stretch a little bit, if that's what you do. Keep your mind busy. Do not think what happens halfway through the race. Okay, I want to say here that one of the most common causes of anxiety just before a race is this, apart from thinking about how hard it's going to be, of course, is getting distracted by one thing or another. Sometimes delays happen. How much you can do about them? Sometimes the weather is bad. Only bad tomorrow, so don't worry about that. Sometimes there's a lack of washroom facilities. Okay? Sometimes there are long lineups. There's all kinds of things that can distract you. The starting time gets delayed. You've warmed up and now it gets delayed for 10 minutes because the police haven't shown up. Don't let those things distract you. Okay? Try to remain positive. Turn your negative thoughts, turn, the, turn those negative thoughts around. Don't overthink or overanalyze, just be relaxed. Try not to act emotionally because it just takes away your energy. That's all it does. And I want you to remember, something will only distract you if you allow it to distract you. Otherwise, it's just something that happens. If the bus is late, the bus is late. There's not a whole lot you can do about it by worrying about it. Okay, now, having said a little bit about nervousness before a race or anxiety before a race. Let's, let's move into the race itself. We're out there on those gentle rolling hills on Cape Spear Highway tomorrow. Fatigue starts to set in. What do most people do? They start to dwell on it, don't they? Sure. They start to think, I'm getting tired. I can't do this. This is tough. This is hard. I have to slow down. I'm not going to make my time. And this whole worry thing sets in again. Now, again, I want to make clear here that I'm talking about short-term fatigue, like that which occurs in a race, not chronic fatigue after you've been six or eight months of hard training. We're just talking short-term fatigue. And in this type of fatigue, there are basically two components. There's psychological and there's physiological fatigue. The physiological, easy. You're getting tired. There's no doubt about it. You're going to get tired. Okay? <coughs> Your glycogen stores are depleted, particularly if you go out too fast, <coughs> which a lot of people do, by the way. Yeah. Your muscles are less fluid. They start to tighten up, and then you slow down very, very quickly. You lose your running form, and you go into what I call survival shuffle. <laughs> and if you've run marathons, we'll identify with what I'm talking about. About six years ago, I was running a race in St. John, New Brunswick, and uh, I was two hours and 47 minutes into it, and I was flowing. I was really moving along. And one mile later, I was in survival shock. It just hit me like that. And 
ended up in an ambulance. Oh my. Hospital. Just this happened. It's not going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Well, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> now, the psychological uh, signs, of course, your, your oh. brain starts to say to you, slow down, slow down. This is too hard. Don't try to catch the person up ahead. You don't need to catch him. Oh, you can't do this, your brain says. Your brain also says, don't worry about the personal best time that is gone. Ah. Stuff like that. Just slow down. There's no way you can run up that hill anyway, so you might as well walk. That's what your brain keeps telling you. That's not true. You can do it. Okay? If you start to dwell on accumulating fatigue, it just makes things worse. If you wonder how you are going to make it, you create anxiety. You create an anxiety syndrome, which leads to negative physiological reactions, which in turn cause more fatigue. Okay, how do we cope? We know now it's going to happen. A certain amount of fatigue is going to be there. That's that's a given. First thing I would say to you: don't fight it. Don't become frustrated with the fatigue. Fighting it is just cause more damage. Accept it as part of your race. Okay, just accept it. Acknowledge it. Okay. Try to relax yourself. Slow down slightly if you must. Try to keep your running form intact. Focus on relaxing your body. Concentrate on your breathing is always a good thing. What you've got to do is take your mind off the fatigue. Because if you keep thinking about how tired you are becoming, you will just get more tired. All right? What I would suggest to you, too, is you focus on small sections of the course, manageable <coughs> sections. For example, you run to that sign, you run to the top of the hill, you run to the intersection. And then when you get there, reevaluate. How did you feel? Maybe you can go another little bit and fool your mind like that. Focus on small, manageable sessions. Concentrate on your form and pace on what's going on in your body. Focus on the mechanics of running. Keep it smooth. Try to flow. Okay? Use good visualization. See yourselves. Pretend you're watching a videotape of yourself running. Good. See yourself being smooth, strong, flowing. <coughs> okay? Upright. Pretend you're doing that. Keep your shoulders relaxed. Every now and then it helps to do this sort of movement with the shoulders. What you need to do, what we all need to do, is to change our habitual beliefs about fatigue and pain. We've got to interpret fatigue as a feeling we get when our muscles are working hard. You can only get fatigue if you work hard. If you're just out for a stroll, you're not going to experience this accumulating fatigue. Okay? Accept it as necessary for a good performance. And I love this one. You take a reality check. Don't think you're the only ones hurting, because everybody is. If everybody's out there working hard, everybody's hurting <coughs> to some degree. Okay? Some more, some less. Of course, if you've done more training and you know that sort of thing, you, it's not going to be as difficult. Everybody is feeling some pain. Divert your attention. Disassociate. Now, I talked earlier about focusing on your form and on your stride and all that. That's <coughs> called association. You can't do that for the entire race. There are periods during the race when you just got to let your mind wander a little bit. So what you do then, you fantasize about some nice vacation someplace. Or you think about the coffee or the reception afterwards. Or something like that. You chant mantras. Do you know what mantras are? Mantras. When you're running along and you're saying to yourself, flow, 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 or strong, 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 strong. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Or one of my personal favorites, stay out of the medical tent, stay out of the medical tent, stay out of the medical tent. Okay, that actually happened to uh, one of the participants in one of my classes one time she went off to run the Mississauga Marathon. And I said, what did you say to yourself as you were running? What did you chant? As a mantra, she said, stay out of the medical tent. Okay, remain in control of your, remain in control, stall the anxiety, reduce that fatigue, Pay close attention to your breathing and form and all that sort of thing. Talk to the fatigue, befriend it, feel energized <coughs> by it, think positive thoughts, and believe in yourselves. Believe in yourself. So, in conclusion, 
as we get ready for tomorrow. I'd like to wish everybody the very best of luck. I know you will have a wonderful, memorable, and exciting race. I want to thank you for your attention here this afternoon. Tonight, go and relax, watch a good movie. I wouldn't suggest you go down to George Street. That's what you want to do. Uh, tomorrow, on those hills, accept your fatigue and flow with it. And as I said a moment ago, have just a wonderful race. Thank you.